Good morning. Uh, thank you uh, to the OIS organizers. This is Occupier's first uh, presentation, and we appreciate being here. So we are a young company. We're less than a year old, but yet we're a late stage company. So I'm going to start with a quick overview. Our lead asset, Nixol, is a um, phase 2B3 ready drug, which uh, has four front of the eye indications that we've focused on, glaucoma, night vision disturbance, reversal of mydriasis, and presbyopia. And we're excited that it's built off of a decade worth of work by the prior team, five clinical studies, phase one and two, and I'll show you some of those highlights. It's well protected with some IP out to 2034. We've got a commercial ready format of a bloquial seal product that we're envisioning. And um, we've got some near-term catalysts. We've got two studies that are underway that'll read out this year. And uh, we're uh, organized around a very experienced management team, myself included, over 20, 25 years in biotech drug development across many diseases. And we're also supported by a great group of KOLs, some of which are here with us today. And so let's start with the science of Nixol. Nixol's in a class that many of you understand. Um, it's in the uh, alpha adrenergic class, although not an agonist, but a blocker. And it's unique and different because it's an alpha one and an alpha-2 blocker, so it's a non-selective for both. And historically, phentalamine mesylate, which is the active ingredient or drug, has been approved in a surgical setting, IV, for vasodilation or reducing blood pressure, about 50 years ago, and about 10 years ago in an oral application for an IM uh, formulation for reversal of anesthesia. So building on that vasodilation property and looking at the alpha-1 side, in the eye, and we're the first to formulate it in an ophthalmic solution stable with some proprietary patents there, it turns out that we can leverage the iris dilator muscle and essentially reduce pupil size or aperture management. In addition, it's known that the alpha-1 blocker through, some, uh, through other precedented drugs has glaucoma properties. It helps both reduce production and the UV scleral outflow. But in addition, with the alpha-2 property, which sits on the trabecular mesh, we have an opportunity to really go at multiple approaches for glaucoma. So those are the inherent properties of Nixol. So the markets I mentioned earlier, the two larger markets, uh, mid-sized markets, at night, night vision disturbance and glaucoma, about 3 million patients each. Uh, obviously, we look forward to approaching those. We have reversal of mydriasis. as a simple, small, but very efficient opportunity for the company. And then, of course, the holy grail of presbyopia. Again, leveraging pupil management or the IOP lo lowering attributes of the drug. Night vision will be new. We've been pioneering it. All of our clinical work to date has been in night vision disturbance. We have an agreed upon endpoint of a uh, certain amount of uh, uh, contrast sensitivity improvement with the FDA. So here's our history. Over a decade of work, preclinical IND, phase one, phase two, all double blind randomized studies. CMC as well, very uh, in good shape with lots of nice stability data. And that progress has led us to this profile of Nixol. So as you can see here, we envision this as a once a day evening dose drug that allows a very nice safety tolerability profile. We saw no systemic side effects, looking for things like heart rate and blood pressure, but we didn't see those. And in addition, we see a little bit of mild transient reversible redness. But what's nice is that effect is shorter than the pharmacodynamic effect of the pupil management or the IOP. And so we're excited that if we take this at night, we actually may see very little redness, and it's only mild in the morning. And then on the efficacy, going back to those four attributes, let me use data to, to describe those. So this is a snapshot of data we presented at AAO. Dr. Holliday presented on behalf of the team data from a study done a few years back in night vision disturbance, double blind randomized study, uh, 20 patients in three arms, placebo 0.5 and 1%. I'm just showing you placebo and 1% as 1% is our selected dose. And as you can see here, if we go clockwise, you'll see that pupil diameter is about a 15% reduction at 1% all statistically significant in these small sample sizes. Two, that IOP normal baselines of 16 millimeters of these night vision disturbance patients, we had about a 2.3 millimeter of mercury drop, single dose, single measurement at two hours, so we expect to see even more robust data in our upcoming study. 
third, contrast sensitivity, which is the primary endpoint for night vision disturbance. We see 35% of the patients have about a 50% improvement in two frequencies or more. And then last but not least, in terms of visual acuity, we actually found nicely as a surprise that we saw two lines of improvement for distance. So again, statistically significant. So we actually learned through the clinic things like the drug was durable, that we improved visual acuity, and we lowered IOP. None of those were actually sort of hypothesized, per se, prior to us uh, moving into the clinic. And so here's our pipeline. We do have multiple shots on goal. Nixol 1% is the lead program with three indications, and then we have some fixed dose combination um, uh, 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 thoughts as well that we will be pursuing. And so let's take a closer look at the two that are up and coming. The first is our glaucoma study. We are underway with the study. Five sites in the United States are planned. 40 patient study, double blind randomized, placebo controlled study. Uh, a diurnal IOP will be our endpoint at 14 days, very typical inclusion criteria of 22 to 30 millimeters of mercury. And uh, we expect to have data in the third quarter. The set. Second study is reversal of mydriasis. Again, not necessarily the largest market, but there was once an alpha-1 blocker approved called Revise, for those of you who have been practicing for 30 years. Uh, it was only on the market from 1990 to 1992. So we added this as an opportunity for a young startup, uh, but yet late stage company to go after so that we can get this product approved. And this trial design, again, mimics some of the FOIA information we received on Revise, and essentially it's 20 patients crossed over, so essentially 40 data points, give the drug after 30 minutes after mydratic agent, and basically see how soon we can get you back to normal, whether pupil size, accommodation, or visual acuity will be measured. And these are normal, healthy volunteers. And so with that, um, Hopefully you can hear that we have this great, exciting new company, Occupier, that's early in terms of its uh, organization, but late in terms of its program. We have some data we'll read out later this year. We look forward to sharing that. And in addition, we will be phase three ready in night vision disturbance, glaucoma, and reversal of mydriasis by the end of the year or the turn of the year. This is our first asset. We're always interested in a second asset. And again, I thank those in the room, whether they're our consultants, our uh, CROs, our manufacturers, and uh, our advisors for helping support and guide us to get where we are in less than a year back in the clinic. Thank you.